Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about was the in kinship and clientage. You kind of the, your 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 goal wasn't to give a clan history of the Grants or the Macintoshes. You used the two, especially the Macintoshes, at the head of Clan Hatton to to teach other things to teach a broader concepts using them as the example did i did i am i getting that accurate and in doing so you you really flesh out the it's a comparison and contrast with both going on in some ways they are very similar and in some ways there was some pretty stark contrast and it reminds me of in a in a different interview of, of bruce fumi's with martin mcgregor he said he doesn't like the term clan system because it implies uniformity throughout, which actually could play back into our earlier conversation of up here it was like this and down there it was like that. And he, these guys were here and those guys were there. And I think what I saw really clearly through reading Kinship and Clientage was that there, the uniformity is kind of made up and there were, were stark contrasts. Can you teach us a little about even within the Highlands? So we're not talking about Highland versus Lowland anymore. We're talking about with amongst Highlanders, they approached their problems differently. They organized, they, their solutions were different. There was some variety there that we don't often give them credit for. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, there's so many factors involved in that. So there is it's a clan organization. So for example, the Macintoshes and Clan Hatton was Clan Hatton at best is described as a clan confederation made up of, or an umbrella clan made up of a number of smaller clans. And they accepted the Macintoshes as their head, but they were not part of the Macintosh clan. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you see that elsewhere. We we tend to think that, you know, this, again, this view that clans are all related to the chief, they're not. You, you, see, you see this with the Campbells as well. Much smaller clans will become absorbed within a larger clan. They might retain their own name, in, in local circumstances, they might adopt the larger name like the Campbells or the Macintoshes if they're outside of their territory, but they will take the protection of a more powerful chief because clans are always expanding because the land is finite, okay? And if you have more people, you need more land. So there's always that expansion contraction going on. Um, the grants much more kind of... Uh, uniform normal clan you know you mostly related but they expand and they have cadet branches they try to maintain those links between cadet branches but if your cadet branch gains territory you know some distance away or on the other side of a mountain range you're not going to be able to retain close links quite so easily plus you also then have local circumstances you know who's who's your neighbor who's are, are they friends or are they not and if they're not then you have to try and find different alliances to protect you from somebody who might be aggressive who might try and be expansionist take over some of your land yeah. and and clans respond in different ways to all of those pressures um and that's where you the clan she, and i've just tried to discuss this often and you see it in larger clans you saw it with the gordons of huntley i think as well but you see it certainly with the campbells you see it with the grants they will um, communicate, they will discuss, they will form a council with some of the main men in their clan and they will discuss the best way forward. Um, on top of that, then you have regional lordship. Um, and I discussed this between the, McKen the McIntoshes and Clan Hatton and, and Clan Grant, who you know are tenants or hold lands from the Earls of Huntley. Sometimes you have to go along with what he says. They might not like it. Um, but if you go against him, you potentially lose your lands. You, you know, so sometimes it's a really difficult situation. He may require 40 days hosting for, from you to go against one of his enemies. You may not want to do that, but what are your options? That's a really good point. Um, that it, it, it drew my mind back to the Gordon of Huntley. For, for a lowlander, he had a lot of interest in the highlands. He's all, his hands, fingerprints are all over up in there. And I would be, I was, I was thinking about this. I would be surprised if Gordon of Huntley's, of one of them, somewhere along the line, didn't have Gallic for as much as they were involved there. Anyway, uh, go ahead. They understand the Highlands to be a source of manpower. You know, that's where they can get men from and fighting men. Fighting and, men. 
they have a national prominence because they can bring a lot of men into the field and that's their own men as well but also their tenants in the highlands no doubt about it so anyway sorry go back to your question so you have all these internal pressures and you have external pressures as well and then you have for example in the McIntoshes and clan hatton one of the main clans within that was the mcphersons who at one point do try to set themselves up as a separate clan it doesn't last for very long but they they want to break free so you know within within an individual clan you have smaller clans joining and you have other branches who are wanting to break free you know yeah it's, it's complex so i mean martin's absolutely right in that respect I, I, there's no sense of a unified clan system you, you operate differently and it may depend on you know who the chief's wife is you know yeah. if he's from a neighboring clan and you don't want to upset that relationship so that impacts your decisions or how you respond to something else that, that's a really interesting dynamic